Kane, and you're listening to WNXP. See 
trust no one But you said, baby, don't run
It's Celia in the Sonic Cathedral at WNXP. We have Hayden, who performs as and writes as Ethel Kane, here in studio uh, because we have a sold-out show tonight. WNXP presents The Basement East. So thank you for making this a priority coming through on tour. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us. It was beautiful to hear those songs in this space. We've been playing the ever-loving heck <laughs> out of American Teenager, which is a great radio song, just a great summer anthem. But a lot of your songs are more like landscapes and long, long songs um, and really painting a picture. So can you tell me about writing your debut record and furthermore, releasing both your EP and your LP in pandemic times? Like, what's this all been like for you? Oh, Lord. Well, um, yeah, I started writing the record long before the pandemic. Um, I think about four and a half years ago now. Um, which was very fun, you know, very just kind of in my bedroom, just kind of writing whatever, you know, uh, came to mind or whatnot. It was a very small scale thing. And then, you know, flash forward a couple years and suddenly there's a pandemic and it's come time to release it. So it was very strange. But, um, you know, looking back now, seeing the start to finish. But um, I honestly think that it was kind of not to call COVID a gift, but I think it kind of worked in my favor because I think everybody was at home in a very like reflective state. And for me, the record is very reflective and kind of brooding. And I think everybody was very much in that brooding mindset from being locked in their houses forever. So I, um, I think it just, I think it just connected, um, for me personally, you know, with everything that was going on. Um, so, you know, I guess it just kind of like the stars were weirdly aligned. Well, first of all, you're not the first artist who said, in, in a semi-apologetic way, it was a gift. I mean, to be able to stop and focus on the craft, yeah. right? And then also how to reach people with these songs. You're right. They met the moment. Um, they still are meeting the continued moment. Have you found, because you released music, yeah, 2021, 2022, um, now that you can see fans, great, but mostly it started sort of this online community and this buzz building about your music. Have you... Can you speak to that, the experience of learning what people are feeling about your music, mostly online, till you could tour these songs? Yeah, I honestly think it was another thing that kind of worked to my advantage where I feel like, you know, in any other circumstance, you know, with no pandemic, it's like you put out an album, you immediately jump into tour, and then everything happens really fast, and you're trying to, like, wrap your head around things and connect with people, but, you know, because it was a pandemic, everybody was at home, like, online, and it just kind of gives you a chance to kind of slowly like make friends with people and connect with them in a more personal way that's more intimate it's more one-on-one -on -one than like you being on a stage and then being in the mm -hmm. crowd it's like you can actually engage with people um and you know you're home and you can it's just everything's more personal um and so I think it allows you to kind of build an audience that I think like wouldn't have been possible otherwise so I think it's another one of those things it's kind of like the silver lining that now that I'm finally out on tour, I'm able to meet all these people finally that I met online mm -hmm. and during COVID. And, you know, now it's like it just feels more special than just like an artist fan behavior mm -hmm. or dynamic. It's more like just like friends meeting community. Yeah. yeah so it's really nice. Well, and I don't think it's an accident just because of COVID times. I mean, your songs are really evocative and very um, rural southeastern vibes, also growing up religious vibes. There's just a lot of community to be built with those themes, yeah. I think. So how are you feeling now a number of months after Preacher's Daughter's Out about playing these songs in front of people? What's it feel like to commune with, with folks and see them in front of you at all these shows? It's honestly so crazy because people are just so engaging and like welcoming. Mm -hmm. I, I feel very lucky to have a cr you know garner a crowd that I have you know when I I will play songs that aren't even released that I posted demos of two years ago and people still cheer at the beginning of it because mm -hmm. they know it because they're like they're as into it as I am and you know it, it makes me feel good and it's it's honestly I was worried I was going to get sick of these songs before we went on <laughs> tour but I have so much fun performing them night after night you know mm -hmm. um and I'm honestly kind of like gonna miss tour when it's over when you know, in the beginning, I was like, I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> so it's it's been really nice. Um, you know, it's it's gotten just like really cool. It doesn't even feel like work anymore. It's just mm. it's like you show up, you play these songs and you still love them and everybody's singing them back to you. And you're like, whoa, this is this is a crazy moment. It's a beautiful moment. Well, so what does being off tour mean for you? I feel like I read that you're continuing the saga of Ethel Kane, but maybe taking on the mantle of uh, the mother. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah, no rest for the wicked. I can't yeah. wait to get home and get started on something else. Um, yeah, I've just been in, like in the back of the, the tour van, just like writing away on my little notes app and like awesome. you know listening to the demos that I have been working on and just you know I'm excited to go home and dive back into something else. I'm just like. If anything, this tour has invigorated me to keep the train going. I'm just like ready to jump into the next the next piece of the puzzle. Meantime, yeah, you might be slowing down sort of by going home, but you're now a fashion icon. Like high fashion has approached you, right? <laughs> this is not just Florida, Alabama talking now. So what was that experience like uh, getting connected with yeah, <laughs> the whole campaign? It was crazy. I mean, whenever um, the first... I guess person in the fashion world to reach out was Matthew Williams with Givenchy. And when he reached out, I I admittedly had no idea who he was. I do not follow fashion. I was not super like privy to that world. And all my friends were like, Oh my God, you know who that is. And, um, but yeah, we like met in Paris when we shot uh, the day the album came out, we shot and it was amazing. He's so kind and just a Mm -hmm. true genius. And, um, and now, yeah, it's been, it's really been really fun. I feel like, you know, whether or not I, think of it consciously I feel like clothes and style is a huge part of the brand because it's Mm. very centric to one period of like American fashion and like a region and so you know I've been kind of exploring my own style so it's been nice kind of like getting to be like okay less about music more about clothes um but you know I feel like every girl just wants to play dress up you're right at one point or another (laughs) so it's been really fun even better when they they're buying you the clothes exactly (laughs) exactly (laughs) give me the closet you get it (laughs) well thank you for being here have an awesome time here and then the rest of your tour including stops abroad I see just selling out shows all over the place so um welcome to Nashville enjoy your time we'll catch you back around this way yeah awesome thank you so much